Restrictions! Restrictions are essential in game design because how can we define a game without telling people what they can't do? I really hope that makes sense, but don't worry, I'm here to explain. Here is a card game. No restrictions means no card limit. No card limit means you can put the same copy of the most powerful card in the game up to the maximum deck size. But wait, we don't even have a max deck size because there are no restrictions. And you can't even deck out your opponent because they have a thousand copies of the most powerful card in the game. So let's build a Yu-Gi-Oh deck of just five cards. Oh, I don't know, maybe these five? Okay, and let's just draw up my hand and oh look, I've won the game. So hopefully you get my point. Restrictions are very, very important when it comes to game design. So if you are a brand new designer and you have no idea where to start, then maybe start with what your game doesn't do. Because if game design was a drawing, then you would start out with the outline of the drawing. This represents the border, the limitations of your game. And then once you have that established, you start splashing in the color and everything that spices up the game and helps it become more unique and vibrant. Now, what kind of restrictions do we want for your trading card game? So keep watching as we're gonna go through the completed list later in the video. But right now, we're gonna deep dive into some specific topics, starting with deck minimum size and deck maximum size. Now, for some TCGs, this number can be the same thing. Some TCGs like to put in a specific hard limit to their deck size. This means that no matter who you are playing against, you will have the same deck size as that opponent. And the reason that this restriction is so good is that it forces the creativity of the players. You are forced to get rid of unnecessary cards. You are forced to use the most efficient cards if you want to build the best deck in that TCG. But what it also does is actually remove temptation. That temptation to add those extra few cards that you feel like your deck really needs. You go from a 50 card minimum deck and you just think, well, I need this card and this card and that card. And suddenly you're on 55, 60 cards, 65 cards, and it starts to run away from you. And suddenly your deck is not efficient anymore because you want to put all of the good cards in one deck. And I know, I know it is a horrible feeling to have to get rid of some of your favorite cards to make way for some other cards, but sometimes it is what is needed to do. So when you are designing your own TCG, consider putting the hard restriction on your deck size. This will equalize the outcome, the gameplay of your players and create a more balanced game. Now taking a look deeper into the cards, we can see that most TCGs have some form of individual card types. Restricting your card types means that they are limited by what can specifically target those types of cards. I know, it's crazy, right? So by designing a character card and a support card, you can then design two follow-up cards that target these two individual cards in different ways. And you can take this further by dividing that main category into subcategories, such as colors, like in Magic the Gathering. And these restrictions is what breeds creativity into your game. As targeting specific cards becomes more specialized, so do the rewards. This is how TCGs end up creating individual playstyles for each type of card that they create within their TCG. This is how you end up with aggressive red cards or defensive yellow cards or deck searching blue cards, whichever way you want to build your game. You can build it and categorize it in these specific ways. Now a worrying restriction that I have is the restriction of likes on this video. Did you know that you can only like this video once? This is a hard throbbing restriction that YouTube have in place that I completely disagree with. But if you would be so kind as to like this video once, it will feel like a hundred likes when I receive it. So thank you very much. Aww. Now as you are developing your game, you will have to move the goalposts from time to time as you unlock new features while in the game designing process. You may start off with the simple monster battle idea where the biggest number squashes the smallest number. But after a bit of playtesting, you feel like your game has evolved 
into a game of hot potato or tag where the monsters are actually just hitting each other once and then activating specific effects rather than destroying each other. Suddenly the numbers aren't even applicable in your game. This is something that can drastically change the style of your game. And then you have to go right back to the start and rework your restrictions. And I'm here to say that is okay because the creative process is a long journey. And sometimes you need to take the extra long route just to get to where you need to be. But always be grateful that you actually made it there and you're not just wandering around lost in the woods, wondering why your game isn't working. And speaking of journey, let's talk about power progression. The first thing that your game needs to do on turn one is heavily restrict your players from doing anything that they want to do. Your players need to earn the ability to be able to play all of the cards in their hand and absolutely obliterate their opponent in one fell swipe. So usually this is done by limiting the resources that a player has on turn one. Magic the Gathering lets you do this by playing one land card per turn. Digimon has a memory gauge that passes the turn over to your opponent as soon as it gets below zero. And in Yu-Gi-Oh you have to tribute a monster to bring out bigger monsters. At least that's how it's supposed to work. Game looping. Now the Digimon TCG is really good for establishing how many times a card effect can be activated in one turn. This restriction prevents cards from activating each other and then creating an infinite loop, which would essentially break the game. And how did Digimon do this? They simply added to the card once per turn. So simple, yet so effective. Though if you are able to get rid of that card and bring it back on the same turn, then you can reactivate the card as it is technically classed as a brand new card. Thanks Lilith Loop. So, it isn't perfect. But by adding a once per turn to your card game, you can save yourself a lot of headache further down the line when you start introducing new cards that might actually start creating some infinite loops. Now another restriction that you could add to your game is something that I would call a chain breaker. Where you add a rule to your game when a card is activated so many times after a player has played a card or interfered with play, then a card can't be activated anymore, therefore breaking the chain of that card reactivating over and over and over again. This is a good restriction to have sitting in the back of your rulebook to help resolve these unforeseen circumstances. And by having this chain breaker rule within your game, you're giving players a chance that find these infinite loops an opportunity to use them but in a limited capacity. This is a good balance because they are rewarded for being knowledgeable and learning something about the game while also not abusing players that have not learned this knowledge, that have not exposed the game in that way. Because at the end of the day, you don't want either player to feel powerless. So if you're creating your homemade TCG, then I have created a list of restrictions that you should establish before diving deeper into the creative side of your TCG. Win condition. The win condition is without a doubt the single most important restriction that you can add to your game. Think about it when you're starting a new game. It's usually the first or second question. How do I win this game? That is what is important to your players and so it should be important to you as a creator. Power progression. Power progression controls the pacing of your game from highs to lows. Now if you want to know more about power progression then I have done a TCG R&D video on the power curve. I'll put a link in the top corner right now. Resources. This one kind of goes with power progression because resources are often used in TCGs to help scale power throughout your game. But I want to separate the two to add that resources need to be restricted throughout your game to prevent players from just playing anything they want. Even during the end game, when your player is at their most powerful, there needs to be some form of restriction with their resources. They still can't just play everything at all. There has to be some form of coordination, some form of strategy. This is what excites your players. This is what challenges your players. And this is what has players 
coming back to your game. Card categories. Categorize your cards and they will keep your game clean and tidy. When everything in your game is defined, then everything is under the watchful eye of your game rules and nothing will slip past. Catch up mechanics. This was a hard one to put so low down the list, but I have covered catch up mechanics in a previous video and yes, I'm gonna put another link in the top right corner there for you to click if you wanna go into more detail about it. But a quick summary would be setting restrictions to prevent players from getting too far ahead will keep the game exciting and close right up till the final turn. Game looping. Game looping has broken so many games of the past. So add your restrictions to make sure that your game doesn't follow the same fate. So build, test, refine and establish the restrictions that you bestow upon your TCG. And the best of luck. Goodbye.